Hey, and welcome to another Tales from the Dark Side review. We're doing Darth Vader 10. Look, Pete, give him the little runner. We're going to do spoilers. That's why you're seeing me big, because if you see me here, you know we're going to spoil things. We appreciate everybody that does it. Solo Wookie, tell them what to do real quickly. Please, everybody, go down there and force push that like and subscribe. Saber, smash that bell to be alarmed of all the greatest content this side of the galaxy. And please stick around for the greatest review this side out of the world. We'll be right back with spoilers. So make sure you're not on here if you... Hey, so welcome back. Spoilers are coming. We're doing Darth... We're doing Darth Vader number 10. We are doing Darth Vader number 10. This is the A cover. So could you explain the covers for the five folks that are out there? Absolutely. This is cover A, and it is done by Aaron Cooter. It is a solid red. It's going to be hard to nine, eight folks, but this is a seriously awesome looking cover. I love it. Yeah, it looks Vader like Frank Miller still. It, it just does. It, it does look like Frank Miller. It's got Vader walking and what appears to be a red sandstorm of some sort. And you can definitely see his new appendages that he is makeshift fashioned onto his body, holding his saber ready to strike. We got cover B. Cover B is one of my faves. This is the 40th anniversary by Chris Sprouse, and it also has a very deep tie-in to the inside panels of this book, which is one of my favorite parts of this read. Yeah. All right, let's dig into it. We're going to give you a little bit of a recap for those of you that haven't read through the whole series. Uh, obviously, they're always doing these intros in the beginning now. They're doing kind of like the scroll intros in all of these Star Wars books. Pretty much tells you that Darth Vader's not allowed to use his force power. The Emperor wants to teach him a lesson. The assassin, who from a stone who used to be supposedly strong, but each book they put out there, he gets weaker and weaker in our eyes is, uh, is in this one too. Eye of the Webbish Bog has been passed already by Vader. Vader's now trying to go to Exegol to find out what the secret of the emperor is. And we start out with this right here. Pete, what is this thing again? Oh, uh, it looks like Shuma Gorath from Dr. Strange to me still. I didn't watch Dr. Sh oh, wait. Yes. I know what you're talking about. All right. So in red quote unquote space, we have Darth Vader. With his Anakin Skywalker uh, fighter with attached is a escape pod that he has the assassin in it. The assassin is crying once again, and Vader says, keep the noise down. We're going to drive right into this thing. This thing that we're talking about is a Suma Ver... Verminoff? Verminoff. Very good. A Suma Verminoff. Yes, that is what it was called, or that's at least what we're calling it here. It is a big squid looking thing with a big eye. But what has happened in the background? Now, all of a sudden, a fleet shows up. Not just any fleet, a fleet of Star Destroyers. This fleet of Star Destroyers is led by an Umbran that we saw before. It's Sly Moore. Sly Moore, you might remember her because if you watch the movies, the original three Clone War ones, um, The Return of Sis, in number two and three, she stands behind old Palps when he's in the Senate. She's the little white, bald-headed lady with the white eyes, it's kind of creepy, doesn't really ever say anything, and has a huge collar. That's the shadow collar that she wears. She chooses to wear that. I think it makes her head look brighter. I don't know why she wears it. Either way, she shoots and fires and says, listen, if the assassin droid couldn't do it, and he passed the eye, and he passed all those droids, well, we're going to have to take him out with a lot of blasts. I'm going to try to bully the bully. I wonder how that's going to go. She ends up sending out a little strike force of TIE pilots. Do you think this is going to work? I don't nope. think it's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> no, Vader's, Vader's not scared. You can't bully the bully like the bully bullied you. He turns around. There's a lot of green fighter pilot bullets, phaser, whatever you want to call it. on laser this blast. Very good. Laser blast it is. <laughs> and there's a lot of twirling with red marks on it. It is very confusing, but actually very exciting when you read the book. It, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. It displays action perfectly. I am thoroughly enjoying a lot of it. Well. Mm -hmm. It does. The next page here. Oh, boom, boom, bang. Yep, didn't work out well for them. Vader takes them pretty much all down. And the assassin hasn't been hit yet, but we'll see what happens. We actually already know the outcome of that because he dies on Tatooine and Sandfields. But either way, uh, she says... Uh, you know what? How many did he get? 
we've got our favorite part here where the tech is counting. Is that Dr. Afra? No, that's just a tech. Okay, yeah. well, seven, eight, nine, 12, 15. He's taking them all out. She says, <laughs> who cares? Yeah, who cares? Send more. We've got three Star Destroyers. Just send a bunch. This then gives us a little sizing issue here. You see huge, enormous TIE fighters chasing a very small star, uh, starfighter plane with Vader getting out of the way. And once again, we have got the assassin crying to Vader that he is crazy. I don't know why Vader tags this guy along. I don't think he actually really does need him anymore. I think it's supposed to be comic relief. But somebody's relieving himself in that escape pod, I believe. I think he's just <laughs> having fun torturing him at this point. Yeah. He may. You get the no, no, no. Here we go. We're going to hit the verm, ver what, Pete? Ver something. Um, the Summa Verminoff. Summa Verminoff. We're going to hit the Summa Verminoff. The Summa Verminoff goes and throws its, yeah, throws its tentacles out there, starts knocking out the Thai pilots. Oh, they think they're safe for a little bit, but no, they're not because we get something from our friend Sly who tells us that this is the greatest predator in the galaxy because... It doesn't just physically attack you like it's blowing up those TIE fighters, but it actually, yep, there you go, Pete. It hits you in the head. It mentally attacks you first. And when it's going to do both, it's going to crush you. Um, the assassin doesn't look too happy about this, but when is the assassin ever happy, I guess? <laughs> then we get some real cool panels. These were really cool, yeah. and you kind of have to follow them a little bit. Um, one of the panels you see here is Vader going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Obi-Wan, so we see that the mind trip is actually starting to work. But with that being said, Vader slashes down Obi-Wan. Our next panel after that And I is... love right there that they give the inference that there might be some mental link after that that Obi-Wan may have, that they never touched on, may have been able to communicate and, you know, haunt Vader due to, if you strike me down, I will only become yeah, more powerful. Possible. We never saw that end, so... Maybe we see that in the comics. Maybe really they, cool inference. Maybe they explore that. That is really cool. I do like how they kind of changed the art up a little bit where they're using the white background. Then you see Darth Vader here on top of uh, where what would be the Emperor's little throne area. And he's looking down on Luke Skywalker. Wow. Redone. Now current time Vader with the arm of robots or mouse bots is looking on to Luke. And you get to see the, hey, how about you come join my... Wait, no, we switched to Obi-Wan saying one of my favorite lines. I have the high ground. And then they... Then, of course, we go to Anakin saying, you underestimate, blah, blah, blah. But wait, Luke's coming back up, and he looks like he's going to attack the Vader Emperor. At which point, Luke loses an arm. But then, Obi cuts off Anakin's legs. Oh! Oh! All yeah, at once. And, well, yeah, they're all gone already. Yes. And then Luke Skywalker now is doing the famous scene where he's looking down. But instead of saying, how could you? He says, I love you, man. Uh, it's <laughs> instead of Obi-Wan, it is Luke Skywalker in Obi-Wan's place. As yeah. He yeah. They, they, they swap positions in this and it, yeah. it's it's interesting. He does say, I loved you, not I love you, man. He's using the Obi-Wan. Yeah. The, I, I, loved I loved you. Yeah, like that. Uh, and then it shoots us over to, oh, Sky City. And we get the, there is no escape. That's Vader talking to Luke, but the roles are reversed. Luke standing over Vader, and Vader is missing his hand? Yeah. And it going? looks like Jedi, even though it's not. It's Empire. Flip. It is Empire. Yep. Oh, yeah, That's right. It does look like an enthralled Jedi. Because yeah, because yeah. Yeah, he's down on the ground and Luke's over him. And then you see Vader say, I, and he's got no hand. What is Vader going to do? Luke looks like he's going over, and Vader says, hey, me and you could get together. We could take out the Emperor. We could be father. We could do that whole shenanigans. And Luke says, nah, not today. Not today. Pops. Cuts off his arm. Just cuts off the other arm. The other arm that had a hand on it. Um, and then you see the Emperor say, good. And you see Luke had javelined old Darthy Darth through the motivator in the middle of his chest. I've right. never seen them leave a saber in someone's chest like that ignited. I don't know if that's a first or I, I don't know. I've never realized that that was a possible feat. Yeah, that it stays on if you're not yeah. old. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ah, it was really cool. I really enjoyed the art. Once again, really enjoyed it. It was visually pleasing. It was cool that they didn't try to push too much. And when they started going to like those quarter panels, I was like, eh, it's going to be quarter paneled out. But then they hit us with this full panel with Luke kind of in the white, like it's almost Phoenix rising type thing going on. And then, like you said, the, the like 
standing up lightsaber sitting in Darth Vader. It was really cool. They did a really good job. And then you get old Palsy Palps there. And it looks like Luke and Palps are holding hands. That's cute. Um, they're not holding hands. They're, just they're holding hands. They're holding hands. All right. Either way, we get here. We get the crash down uh, Starfighter. And, of course, the assassins crying and coughing. And then you hear the big rumble rumble. And we get, uh-oh, what's going to happen? Because our friend here, the squid, the Suma Verm Vermin. There you go, Verminoth. Looks like it's going to start attacking, but Vader does what he's not supposed to do. Oh, by the way, the little bubble things is kind of interesting. They're trying to show scale, so it's a very small dot, and then they do like a looking bubble on them. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, like a zoom and, in kind of thing to give you a sense of scale, definitely. Definitely a sense of scale. And he starts to use the force, at which point uh, the assassin tries to lecture him about, like, you're not supposed to do this. The Emperor's going to get you. <laughs> and uh, he goes, yeah, pretty much I don't fear the Emperor. I don't fear anything. I'm Our Darth death. Vader. He goes, I don't fear death uh, because death is what it is. The assassin goes, well, I'm going to start running. And Vader goes, well, I'm not running for anything. He then, like, does, like, a rock -a -bye baby type thing, mind melt this thing into with the Force. And he ends up uh, in the last panel jumping on top of it and saying, hey, look, Emperor, I'm coming for you now. And you see, once again, scaled him in a tiny yellow circle on top of the big eyeball squid. Yeah. Yeah, so what would you say that looked like to you? Looks like, uh, you know, it's kind of an homage of uh, Vader riding him like he's an oliphant, you know, from Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Like, I'm, like, I'm totally coming and I got the biggest beast in the land and I'm riding it. <laughs> he's my buddy now. Very good. They do another scale thing where they show uh, Exegol as in the city where, you know, there might be a snook or a uh, a clone of Palpatine being formulated in there. God bless it. Um, hopefully, uh, I wish he would just wreck this altogether and we wouldn't have to deal with it anymore. But unfortunately, we're going to have to deal with the AJ, JJ Abram bomb of a movie. Anyways, <laughs> real cool panel here. It looks really great. Also, something very interesting. They did give us the preview of the cover, which we already knew this was coming out because of the FOC, of issue 11, where you get to see the acolytes in the background. They look really cool, really exciting. But what we didn't see is in this run, a lot of times, especially in this arc, we have seen the next challenge or challenges, which we would assume be the acolytes, in the final panel. This is not the case. Unless it's just the temple is there reveal yeah unless the temple is their reveal and then we're gonna get a closer the look same, at the temple the yeah maybe we're not gonna see the acolytes we hope we get to see the acolytes a little bit more story on the acolytes for 11 of course we're gonna have the usual cooter cover yes i want to say cooter cover for a a ron um <laughs> a -A -Ron. Same, people, same people are gonna end up the story we did not see an encino uh like one in ten for this but you can only imagine there's gonna be a, a spruce cover too we did not pull that that's all we got. Hopefully you guys like this one. Anybody else have anything to add? No. All right. Hey. Book. Thank you. We'll see you for number 11.